one of the most fascinating things uh, in the contemporary world is to see how the Spirit of God is working in amazing, fresh, new ways. David Garrison, in his influential book, A Wind in the House of Islam, says that how there are at least 82 documented movements towards Christ that have happened in the Islamic world in the last 1400 years. But of the 82, nearly 69 of them happened since 2000. So in the last 15 years, there have been an amazing move of God among people in the Islamic world. Similarly, scholars and uh, missiologists are talking about a fresh wave, a fresh expression of the Spirit of God happening across the world. Something remarkable happened in the first decade of the 20th century that resulted what we commonly call as the Azusa Street Revival that spawned new movements across the world. The great Pentecostal and charismatic revival movements happened across the world uh, in the 20th century. Similarly, people are noticing that there are some fresh expressions of the Spirit of God happening in the first decade of the 21st century. It's happening in my country, India, as well, as we are witnessing one of the largest movements of people coming to Christ, particularly among diverse socio-religious communities that has been historically resistant to the gospel. I lead one of the largest research projects that's particularly going on in the Global South, a study of the new Christward movements happening in North India. It's so fascinating to see how people are being drawn towards Christ in various ways. People are coming towards Christ. We, that's why we call it as Christ Word Movement. Sometimes not towards church as we know of, or not even towards the Christianity as we know of, but they are coming towards Christ. Of course, there have been a lot of controversy around it. And uh, at least in the Western world, there is a lot of issues about insider movement, whether that is correct or not, and which is kind of tearing apart the, the missional community. However, we look at it differently. As somebody who has been trained as a missiological anthropologist and having served for nearly 25 years in my own country, India, we tend to approach it a little differently. We are looking at these as movements, as fresh expressions of faith that are leading them towards Christ. Like all of us, these people are on a journey moving towards Christ. So sometimes when people ask me, are you for insider movement or are you against insider movement? I tend to say I follow the Barnabas principle. Remember when the Antioch church was established, as we read in Acts chapter 11, the church was, that was the first time the gospel was intentionally proclaimed to the Greeks, the Gentiles, and the church that came together was a primarily a Gentile church. So the way they worshipped, their expressions of, uh, their forms of expression of their faith were very different from how it was in the Jerusalem church. So when the apostles sent Barnabas to Antioch to see what was happening, we read in Acts chapter 11 that when Barnabas saw the evidence of God's grace, he was glad and he encouraged them to stand firm in their faith. It's interesting because even though they might have worshipped God in a very different way, but when he saw the evidence of God's grace, he encouraged them. So my question is, as we see all these various movements that are happening around the world, my question is often, do we see an evidence of God's grace in that? So when you see the evidence of God's grace and when you encourage them, the people then embrace you and then you get the right to engage with them. And that's what Barnabas did. And then, you know, he went to remember the story. He went back to Tarsus. He brought Paul and together... They taught for one full year and they were called as Christians. So even as these movements are growing, it is my prayer that we would be able to rejoice in what the Spirit is doing and at the same time embrace them so that we could continue to engage with them and facilitate these movements and teach them and ground them in the Word of God. Because these people, like all of us, are on a journey, as I told you earlier. Remember when the, Jesus was talking with the Samaritan woman, 
And how did she Jesus the first time? When she, how did she perceive Jesus? The first time she saw Jesus, she would have thought, uh, here is a Jewish male rabbi. But then as Jesus engaged with her, her idea of Jesus grew. And then she said, are you greater than my forefather Jacob? And then after some time, you know, as Jesus continued to engage, you know, he said, oh, are you, uh, are you a prophet? I see you're a prophet. And then after some time, what happened? She went to the people, her own people and said, could this be the Messiah? But if you read John 4, the story ends with this great proclamation by the Samaritan saying, you are indeed the savior of the whole world. So this growth process happens as we engage with the people, relate with them lovingly, thereby continue to facilitate their growth and their understanding of Jesus Christ. But you also notice there in, 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 in chapter 4, Jesus told the disciples, open your eyes and look at the fields. The fields are ready for harvest. Why would Jesus do that? A few verses earlier, if you look at John 4, chapter verse 30, he said that the Samaritans were moving towards Christ. Probably this is the only place where we have the specific word, there is a Christ word movement. They were moving towards Christ. And if at all there is somebody who could stop that movement, it could be the disciples because they were seeing the Samaritans through their prejudiced eyes as Jews. So Jesus was telling, open your eyes. I know your physical eyes are open, but I want you to open your eyes and see the world. See the people as I see, because people are coming to me and I want you to embrace them. I want you to rejoice in what I'm doing and I want you to facilitate this movement so that they can grow in their understanding and their knowledge of me. So that's a great lesson for us to learn. As we see these new expressions happening around the world, let us rejoice and continue to lovingly relate and engage with this movement so that we can facilitate them. The spirit is on the move. There are fresh movements and expressions of the spirit of God happening all over the world. May we be in step with the spirit. Thank you.